Uh, Srinivas, while you are doing that, uh, a quick question. Uh, a couple of session backs, uh, uh, you said, I mean, you will be sharing some link or document where we can download a virtual machine so that we can configure uh, everything, the cluster and other stuff. No, didn't you come out again? Uh, no, I, I was asking for an environment, right, where we can pr uh, practically uh, set up the cluster and uh, uh, install everything ourselves. You said uh, there is a way uh, where we can get the virtual machine and uh, using that we can set up the cluster. You mean uh, fully distributed mode? No, no, no. <clears throat> like uh, right now the current one, whatever we are using, it is already uh, having a cloud era manager and cluster is already, pseudo cluster is already available, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, when I asked is there any other uh, possibility for us to install the cluster, I mean set up the cluster, you said we can do that uh, by oh, just... Okay, uh, okay. Uh, okay, got your point. I mean uh, specifically setting up CentOS and uh, on the top, you know, using the services, right? I mean setting up on your own, manual uh, yeah. setup of your services, if I'm not wrong. Is that true? Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send it to you, Sunil, probably today. Okay. I may not be having uh, my, my Monday session. So today, tomorrow, I'll find out some time. So okay. if I remember correctly, I might have shared this one. Uh, downloading the CentOS uh, VM bundle, only CentOS VM bundle, and in that we are going to set up uh, things on our own. That is what I, I I have explained, if I'm not wrong. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you, you said. But um, uh, the links and uh, uh, other documentation required for that uh, mm. you need to share. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. So you see the, the point that has been mentioned here, sometimes uh, even though you are modifying slash etc slash hadoop slash conf, when you do the modifications here, you know what is the path for, what is the importance of this path? Slash etc, slash Hadoop. In that if you go and see, there is something called conf. In that you will be noticing where this is. This is on my master node. I hope you are you are looking at this one. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you have HDFS hyphen site dot XML where if you go and see what is the default uh, DFS block size is 128 MB. Of course, been mentioned in the form of uh, what is that? In the in the form of bytes here, DFS dot block size, DFS dot replication. The same thing if you look at, you may be noticing the DFS dot replication on a pseudo cluster. It is by default going to be one. But here it has been kept as 3. Of course, same configuration. We also notice as a part of this one, if you go and see your configuration details, whatever you are noticing there in that uh, 
What is that? DFS dot block size. DFS dot block size. You notice that is one twenty eight MB. Same we are seeing here. DFS dot block size. But it is the value has been given in the form of that is where it is uh, given very next to this one. 128 MB and the default replication factor DFS dot what is that DFS dot replication is three. You can also see that here default replication what is been given. But the point that needs to be noticed here, <clears throat> why we are discussing this one, modifying etc slash hadoop slash conf and restarting HDFS will not have any effect. Sometimes the reason behind that is what is the reason behind? This is because service instances started by Cloudera Manager do not read configurations from the default locations. To use HDFS as an example, when not managed by Cloudera Manager, there would be usually be one HDFS configuration per host. Are you following uh, this point? Yes, so so I, I didn't get it. So so that XML file, if you try to update that XML file, you're saying uh, it does not read that. Exactly. So so when we make the changes from the cloud era manager, it doesn't write to those XML. It writes to yeah. a different location. Exactly. Exactly. That is the reason why HDFS role instances obtain their configurations from a, a private per process directory under where run Cloudera SCM agent process there will be a unique process name unique process name given each process its own private execution and configuration environment allows cloud manager to control each process independently. And in order to see that one only, if you look at this path, whatever the path that you need. So basically we have whatever you have to do, you have to do only within cloud manager. Exactly. Even if you go and change this per process uh, file, I mean, I don't know if you can even change it. It looks like we cannot, right? No, we, I mean, it is not advisable. Because if you do this mix and match, and uh, you, you'll be definitely, uh, certain things you manage, certain things cloud manage. That is where we can find things only to get managed. You see this one here, I think you noticed this is slightly different. 130 Hive, uh, Hive Meta Store, 131 DFS Create, DAR, Hue Server, Yarn Resource Manager. I think you are noticing here. This is what uh, uh, clearly been mentioned here. Each process its own 
private execution and configuration environment. I think you are seeing that one here very clearly. Even you see HDFS uh, name node format and uh, see that here. HDFS name node host inspe inspector all these things these are the uh, private uh, uh, per process configuration details right so the reason behind why even if you make changes here will not have no effect this is because service instances started by cloud manager you see here, this is because service instances started by cloud manager do not read configurations from the default locations. What, what is the default location? I think uh, this part uh, you have already implemented. When you have uh, Sunil, if you remember correctly, you have bypassed the uh, the uh, boot level startup of your uh, services from your pseudo cluster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember that. So that time again, uh, you are compelled to use certain commands and make. Yeah, your, it's in, in the same sequence. Yeah, in the same sequence, and that to be during your boot process. Then yes. you are able to do that. Because when you do that, those services are going away from the hands of your cloud manager. Let it be pseudo cluster or even a fully configured. But the configuration yeah. details and the paths are going to remain the same. That is the reason why we need to ensure we don't manually start the services, a few services of the uh, Cloudera setup and few services to the Cloudera manager and a few manually on our own from the terminals. We will not be doing that. Mix and match of that, we will not be doing it. That may result in malfunctioning, I mean, it looks that they are malfunctioning, actually not malfunctioning because of uh, this reason. You got this point, uh, uh, Arun? Yeah, so yeah. so you are saying uh, when I changed yeah, the right. Cloudera manager file, uh, uh, this is the reason it is not allowing because it, uh, we are not supposed to change and it will not reflect the changes. Exactly. Oh, okay. Right? Because usually uh, making the changes at this one in ETC conf only, not only this one, even other services at your operating system level slash ETC, if you see there, see here, for how many services the configurations are located here. For all the configurations are located here only. GrubConf you have here only, Hive, Hive Edge Catalog, uh, HBase Solar, um, Hadoop, Impala, your uh, NID, for all things, your resolve conf, all configuration stuff present here only. This slash etc uh, directory. 
your yum configuration also is present here on it yum install you will be saying right while installing the um, respective packages and all on your operating system level repository configurations and all available here on in your etc and also you might have noticed i don't know whether because it may not be possible to see every time until and unless we make the changes we will not be able to see that so if you have noticed properly in the last uh, session itself you have seen that there is some warning whenever you have made some changes to the uh, respective service <coughs> making some property changes you have noticed that uh, you know the stale configuration so till you restart the service impact will not be there it is the same much, uh, phenomena like uh, whenever you install any software on your machine whenever you install any software on a machine till you restart the computer those uh, uh, modifications been done will not be impacted till you restart of course you can restart later and continue but you will not be able to see the effect same is the thing here when you go to your cloud run manager and see the services again as the service you will be noticing stale configuration i think in the last uh, uh, we have done that after adding the you observed when we got that stale configuration only after restarting the service that stale configuration is been fixed you noticed when think forgotten we have added the zookeeper service at the later stage you remember yeah so after adding the zookeeper service we have made the changes right i have shown you where you made the changes we have gone to hdfs after going to hdfs in the configuration part i have shown you that the zookeeper is going to be yes zookeeper service and if i take this as none and assume save changes go to your cloud run manager you noticed that there is a stale configuration here you notice that yeah what do we mean by this stale configuration because you need to have the zookeeper running so no zookeeper is running no doubt but what is this stale configuration when we have made changes to the to certain properties which is expected to be this is expected to be restarted i think you noticed here stale configuration restart needed i think you are seeing here because of uh, making the changes to your making the changes to your configuration you are expected to redeploy the client configuration why i am not making zookeeper service as a high availability aspect for your hdfs that is the reason why i need to um, redeploy this particular service right hdfs service of course we will not be doing that in our here i am just showing you earlier there was no 
there was no issue but now re, uh, the stale configuration has been de uh, detected and uh, restart is needed that is what it is saying i think uh, So basically, if you make any changes, you have to restart those services. Not every time. That is right. that is the reason why we are bringing this aspect called stale configuration. Not every property. You see here. Here itself, you notice that whenever you made changes. not to every property that is what i am trying to bring it to your notice not to every property you can see that if you go to your cluster now go what is that so you discarded the changes or i discarded the changes I discarded oh, the changes. Okay. Discarded the changes in the sense, uh, uh, I reverted those things. Discarded is different. Discarded is something like um, you haven't uh, saved those things, but I saved it, but I reverted those things back to normal. So restarting of the service okay. is not required. Okay. So I think you can say roll back. Yes, it is something like roll back. Yes. Okay. So that is uh, something related to this one, but you notice closely here. In order to make any of these things, stale configurations or client configuration files, so in order to make all these things possible, at your cluster level, at your cluster level, you need to be. you go and see username is admin and roles is a full administrator and you also might have noticed here that in order to perform certain operations at the cluster level you need to have those privileges not every service and working with every service and performing every action is possible with every role you notice that yes sir so it is good to know it is good to know and please hear these are only cloudera manager uh, roles not your hadoop roles you need to remember that and if you go to a different bundle you may be having different roles there not the same because these are not linked with your hadoop components these are linked with your cloudera manager so you cannot expect the similar kind of uh, roles maybe these kind of roles exist but it is not sure that every uh, bundle like you go to hortonworks you may have different roles there which you need to find it out what are the different roles and with each role what uh, operations you can perform that you can come to know only with its documentation but for sure the procedure and the process is going to remain the same what is that cl cloud or manager user roles what are the roles that are possible with your cloud or manager you have auditor read only limited operator operator configurator cluster administrator bdr administrator navigator administrator user administrator 
key administrator and full administrator now what is the role what is the role with which i logged in full administrator that is the reason why i was able to perform anything on my cluster but at times when i am going to create the users as a as a full administrator or uh, full authority on this cluster whenever i am creating the users go and see here i create a user add user while i am adding the user you need to decide which role needs to be given i create the user with username and the password and i need to assign what is the role what is the role based on that only the respective user can perform the operations on the cluster are you able to understand this one friends so if you look at uh, the things closely what we are doing on our cluster we have set up a full uh, fully distributed mode adding the host and all we have uh, set up the cluster and to that cluster we have added the services one by one and uh, how to make changes to the uh, configuration of your uh, cluster especially the service level uh, changes that how you can make it is always advisable that you do it through your ui rather than doing it manually going to the respective uh, folder structure on the respective host it is always good that you make the changes through the cloudera manager instance not directly going to that particular node uh, using your terminal and make the changes there because a small typo at that level may create any kind of uh, issue that may make your cluster to be unstable entire cluster to be unstable so that is why you make all the changes there now as a continuation to that one we are understanding what we mean by stale configuration and uh, what roles and uh, uh, responsibilities associated with uh, each user depending on the creation that we are trying to observe so look at this one so shrinivas uh, one question uh, sorry to interrupt yeah so um, that uh, fully administrator is there any restriction or limitation like uh, how many uh, users can get uh, full administrator role no, no 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 we can we can have so we can have n numbers i mean we can have usually we will not do that i mean as a measure but uh, if required can be done that's not a problem you can create here you want you can see you can uh, go to the users one second you can see that here full administrator okay and you can create because already you are in the full administrator role you can create one more full administrator that's not a problem okay maybe i can create with uh, something called uh, sunil and the password is also sunil and i say okay you see that here yeah role is a full administrator you can create that that's not a problem okay okay so, so not only this you. one you also you want you can uh, after creating the user also you want you can change it that is not a problem you can make him only an auditor you see that here got it 
So, so these are cloud era these are cloud era users not on the on the uh, unix level right come out again uh, arun this is this is on the hdfs user it is not a unix user uh so, so centos arun you mean to say centos yeah, user yeah sorry sorry yeah centos user no relation with uh, that user anymore when you are okay, working uh, here I got your point. Those will be created only when you are adding services to your cluster by the uh, process that are getting uh, initiated on the respective nodes of the cluster. We will not be creating. I got your point, uh, uh, Arun. Correct me if I am wrong. Pseudo. Is this you are saying? Yeah. So, so here HDFS is basically a CentOS user, right? Created on the CentOS level. Exactly. CentOS user created by your respective service, right? Okay. That is not right. been created by your operating system. I mean, that is not been created by someone. I mean, that is not been created. I can say like this: that is not been created by the system admin. Because usually, who creates the users and all on this machine? So the uh, the Linux admin would create the users for the box, right? Yes. And then I and then we would go in and create users that can actually use the Cloud Era Manager service. That is the reason why I think you might have noticed we need the root access uh, uh, to set up all these things. At the time of adding the host and all, we have specified uh, the user is root and accepts the same uh, password. What has been mentioned, and uh, because. We have got the root access to all the hosts that we are adding to the cluster. Using that root privilege, we can create any kind of user on this one. As a part of that only, they created the user called HDFS. And with that HDFS user only, they might have set up uh, various uh, roles as a part of that service. You have roles, right, as part of that service? You take HDFS service, we have roles there. Data node, name node, secondary name node, balancer. All these things come under roles only. So different roles can be set up as part of that particular service and can be uh, monitored only when the user is created for that particular service. Right? So those users are the one which are created by the Cloudera manager as part of the cluster setup process. But whatever been created, root and all what we are using now, those are all created by the Linux admin. When you have created your operating system and made the access and all. What the users we are seeing here, these are the Cloudera manager users. So no relationship exists between these two types of users. Only relation is their users. Users to manage your Cloudera cluster. Users to work with your operating system. So both will have a lot of similarities in terms of the permissions and all that stuff. Roles and responsibilities. But uh, the users are different. The HDFS user at that level is different from that of the... That is why when you see that here, you don't have any roles what you have noticed as part of your uh, CentOS. HDFS user, your uh, MapRed user, your uh, Flume user. So all those users at your... Uh, CentOS level, but these are the users at your Cloudera manager level. 
you got the point uh, yeah got it got it got it so these are used only for uh, <clears throat> working with the services right absolutely so can we use uh, this user for uh, invoking in uh, um, a scoop uh, job or i mean running a scoop uh, script or pig script no that is different again uh, uh, sunil mm -hmm. that is there those are the queue users again okay those are different again so i am going so we, we have centos users uh, now we saw cloud era manager users and uh, yes you, we have few users also so let me also make you to understand there you go to hue and you go to hue web ui uh, here i need to specify one second. um 192.168.159.40 because there is no address resolution for that uh, uh, you know domain what we created i think it is cloudera cloudera if i'm not wrong yeah so here if you see you have again the same uh, story of manage users if you look at that one manage users so here also we have add user and uh, you are able to add the user i think you noticed here okay demo user uh, maybe demo demo and say next year you specify the first name and all that stuff and without that also not a problem and uh, here you are only specifying super user status or not so based on this one you are able to give get the access to access all these things so this is all at the development level when you are you level hadoop user experience level these are at your hadoop user experience level you can create groups and make uh, uh, i mean or resign uh, the users to the respective group and uh, make them to access the services as part of your hadoop user experience these users are different from your cloudera manager users all the concept of users only but with the respective user uh, credentials what we are going to do and from which management console we are going to do differs say for example here i made this as sunil and uh, sunil sunil i mentioned this as a maybe a read only issue i say okay user has been added now i log out and i log in as sunil and sunil
you notice dear yeah will requires additional authorization no we don't have uh, uh, you know the provision to make any changes at all here same yeah property. that's what it says read only yeah, yeah read only because the same properties you might have noticed when i logged in as a full administrator i have got the chance to make the changes to these properties using my uh, text boxes and all but that is not possible with my that is not possible with my read only uh, role that is been so you go and see uh, my profile it is only And last successful login was never because we we haven't logged in any time before and you you log out from there and you log in again admin and admin and now the same thing if you go and see the same aspect i am going to the same hdfs again and i am going to the same configuration again but this time you notice that you have uh, the access to all these things you noticed so i think uh, you got the understanding that is the reason why we need to at least go through don't remember don't by heart are you following with me friends yeah so if you yes, friends yeah if you look at this one closely each time you are creating the user each time you are creating the user you are you are uh, compelled to give a specific role and what each role why this is been uh, specifically focused is in order to make client configuration files assume so minimum role required is configurator so everywhere we have that minimum required role is configurator so in order to perform every action at your uh, cluster level you need to have a specific role assigned so i advise you to go through the roles that are there here friends you have an auditor role you data and cloud manager and view audit events only only audit events where we come across the audit events i think you noticed here you have something called audits here there you notice successful uh, login as an admin successful login as sunil from which ip address you noticed from which ip address yes friends created user role deleted user uh, sunil updated user sunil so all these comes under the audits so here if you see each role the auditor role you have read only view data in cloud run manager view service and monitoring information view service and monitoring information i think you are seeing that one and uh, limited operator view data in cloud run manager view service and monitoring information decommission host say this is where we need to discuss uh, things again 
what we mean by decommissioning and all roughly we have uh, we have discussed we have understood but if you need to precisely understand so we look at that uh, concept what we mean by decommissioning and during decommissioning what uh, needs to be what needs to be taken into consideration those things we can see at the uh, a bit later but if you see closely this one depending on the need you are going to create the user and make the user to perform those things only so being a full admin you may be creating a specific role limited operator if i create what you can do he can only decommission the host he may not be able to do anything other than that right if it is a case of operator start stop restart cluster services except the cloud ram management service decommission recommission the host so those things can be done but if you observe closely here an operator role does not allow the user to add service uh, services to your cluster and add roles to the services or add host to the cluster or take any action that affect the state of the cluster or any other actions that affect the state of the cluster so what i advise you to do is please go through these uh, cloud ram manager user roles once of course you need not remember uh, precisely everything at times when you are creating the users that time you can decide but overall you get the understanding every role will have certain default uh, read only things i mean viewing the data in the cloud ram manager is is uh, possible to every role every role can uh, allow you to view the data in the cloud ram manager you see the configurator perform all operator operations plus this is a hierarchy that we are seeing auditor read only limited operator operator configurator cluster administrator this is a hierarchy of uh, operations configure services enter and exit uh, maintenance mode manage dash uh, dashboards start and stop your kms services and your uh, your cluster administrator what he can do your bdr administrator navigator administrator user administrator and your uh, you know full administrator you are logged in as a full administrator that is why we were able to see everything we were able to see everything so while performing every action inside your cluster it has been clearly mentioned what is the minimum role required for that so depending on the type of the operations that you wish your users need to perform create that particular user account so that they will be able to manage only that specific so hope this is clear friends view what been mentioned make sense Yeah, so, Srinivas, uh, can you show me the difference between full administrator and user administrator? So, full administrator and user administrator. View service uh, and monitoring information. Manage user accounts and the configuration of external authentication. Only those things can be. Only those things can be done. so uh, i mean i i saw that uh, what is it uh, you, we can remove a full administrator using user administrator 
so we can can we add an uh, user i mean full administrator no it didn't get you come out again no it says uh, for removing a full administrator the minimum uh, role is user administrator so that means we can remove any uh, full administrator using the user administrator role so at the same time can we add full administrator role using the user administrator so what is the user with which i logged in now i logged admin? in admin yeah admin only right yes yeah tell me now so here what is that you are saying user administrator user administrator yeah so using uh, right now if i log in with sunil mm -hmm. i can remove uh, admin right oh you mean to say uh, the full administrator yeah so i don't think uh, sunil you'll be able to do that because i mean in this document whatever you are showing it says that mm -hmm. but there is only but there is only one full administrator right here okay you you are not able to go, uh, you know remove the full administrator well yeah, that's the... what i got confused and uh, that is the reason i was asking this if you see the document mm -hmm. if you go to removing full administrator scroll down yeah yeah even yeah says removing the full administrator user role okay it says minimum required role is user administrator also provided by full administrator you also see here you can remove it as long as you have at least one remaining user account with user uh, administrator privileges but we need to have at least one full administrator right yeah that's true but this statement again whatever you are highlighting th that says uh, one uh, one user administrator so sunil is already user administrator now it should allow me to remove admin id but uh, that is not the case uh, i think you know what what i'm saying yeah i got your point i got your point but i think so in that case it should say uh, uh, remaining user account with one full administrator pri privileges that should be the case but for sure uh, you know i mean forget about this one but we when we see this one clearly it is not allowing me to create uh, i mean to uh, delete this user at all you noticed here you logged in yeah, as yeah, administrator only but you are not able to delete this uh, at all you are not able to delete that because if you delete this one the maximum permissible for this cluster is now only user administrator yeah so then you will be having the challenge right can we add uh, uh, administrator I mean full administrator using uh, sunil can you add an user now how oh, you want to add the user now yeah uh, maybe arun and uh, arun i can... make him as full administrator see we are not able to create full administrator yeah so we are not able to create a full administrator with the role of a user administrator, user administrator we are not able to create a full administrator yeah so that is what my question when we are not able to create a full administrator we should not have privileges for removing a full administrator but whatever document is completely uh, uh, if i mean it is completely different than what we are seeing right now 
the full administrator role is created using but you can remove it as long as you have at least one remaining uh, user account with uh, user administrator privileges so this is wrong as per what we saw right now one second let me create one more uh, You can remove it, removing the full administrator role. To remove the full administrator user role, perform the following steps. Add at least one user account with user administrator privileges to ensure that at least one uh, such user account already exists. Okay. So ensure that there is only a single user account with, uh, okay. That is also there. While logged in as a single remaining full administrator user, select uh, your own user account, either delete. Uh, one second. But I'm not sure admin and admin how this is going to reflect in the users part admin now I delete myself how I can create one more full administrator now Yeah, only full administrator can create full administrator. This doesn't make any sense. No. See, I, I, I delete this user now, the full administrator. Because we but you cannot create an, another full administrator, right? One second. Let me just delete uh, these two. And uh, see... Uh, now we are not able to even do that. Yeah. Now we are not able to even do that. So to certain extent this is uh, fine. So to remove yeah. the full administrator user role while logged in as a single remaining full administrator user while logged in as a single remaining full administrator user Select your own user account, either delete or assign it to a new user role, provided uh, we have uh, at least one user account with user administrator privileges to ensure that at least one such user account already exists. But this is somewhat, uh, I don't understand here. If the user, yeah. if the user uh, creates I mean, if the user uh, uh, privileges, user account privileges, uh, with that you create an account, how come you can uh, bring in a full administrator? You will not be able to bring the full administrator, right? Yeah, that's true. Manage user accounts. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. View service and monitoring information. Manage user accounts and the configuration of external authentication. So manage user accounts. 
Now I create a new user with Sunil and uh, now this is like a user administrator resume. Oh, uh -huh. so with user administrator, I can create the user uh, with a full, uh, because this role is specific to the user management, right? So I'll be able to... I no, you are able to create users, but you cannot create a full administrator with user administrator. We can do that. We can do that. We can do that. No, that's what we saw, right? We are trying to create Arun as full administrator, and it's said uh, it is not even available in the drop down. No, let me just uh, log in as me, and then you can see. Don't delete the admin because we uh, will lose that. We delete this one, then we'll, we'll be left that. with no option. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, now log in as Sunil. Okay, and if you try to create an user, it will not be. A, I mean, full administrator will not be available under users. I mean, that roles. Then how come uh, the user administrator uh, role? No, it is allowed. So having. Yeah, having user administrator, what it says is correct. We can delete the full administrator, but we cannot create a full administrator with user administrator. Then uh, how it is possible to have a full administrator in the system again? Yeah, that is what I'm asking. That is the a question I, I got doubt. I want to see how it is. Oh. Maybe uh, we need to have one more uh, look at that because these roles I see uh, slightly, I mean, especially these two roles only. I see, you know, there is an ambiguity. But we delete uh, the uh, full administrator and uh, try to do that one. Maybe uh, we can again uh, reinitiate that. That's not a problem. But we need to have all the users in place so that we'll be able to do the other things also. Not taking the risk of this one, but cluster administrator also we create one, um, manage user accounts and all. So let me see the cluster. So here in cluster administrator, it says manage uh, full administrator accounts. So that is where I'm thinking now. So in order to make this possible, so we need to have different roles in existence. Then only we can uh, go and delete the full administrator. So that at okay. least later on, when I log in with, uh, let me see, let me see that once. Yeah, can you create Arun as a yes. cluster administrator? Cluster administrator. If we were able to create a full administrator using cluster administrator, then I think, uh, Yes, we were able to achieve that one. Yeah. So using user administrator, you can change it, uh, change someone to cluster administrator, and then create a full administrator. Yes. Or directly you log in as a, a cluster administrator and create a full administrator. Yeah. So here we don't have a user administration at all. The cluster administration doesn't have user administration at all. Can you see security? No, no, no way. It's all related to uh, this one and enable your Kerberos and all. Uh, then, then this is strange. I mean, we don't have. <laughs> it says manage uh, full administrator account. That's what it says. If you see the document, also it will say that. One second,
is a low mean. So, no, Sunil, I feel um, to make all these things possible, we need to have a different, different user accounts in place. Then only you can remove your full administrator. At any point in the future, how you can bring your full administrator? Even this uh, user administrator manage user accounts. We don't have the possibility of managing the user accounts here. We met this as a user administrator only, right? I didn't notice this. Aaron, Aaron is cluster administrator. Ah, the user administrator. No, you, with user administrator. Okay. Let me log in with Sunil. Sunil and Sunil. And uh, user administrator only. Now I go to the users and I select um, as and roles. We don't have even full administrator here. We don't have the option to make the full administrator, right? So once you lose a full administrator, where, where is the chance that you get back that one? I mean, imagine that there is only one full administrator and that we removed it using oh this is a bit strange there should be an option i don't know that's what i'm trying to find out uh, we'll figure it out uh, sunil yeah we'll figure it out let me make a note on this one because we don't usually work at that precise uh, um because usually these clusters should all be managed by one. You, you will not have that level of hierarchy. They might have provided this one. Because usually the cluster sizes itself will be ranging between uh, 5 to 10 nodes, 12 nodes, 20 nodes and all. So you will not have full band. Usually the same admin is going to perform all the activities. He himself is going to be the full administrator. And... Um, perform all the operations almost but this you see only in the large clusters where you have hundreds thousands of nodes where we have multiple administrators not just one and those administrators will be performing only those specific tasks not beyond so this is definitely an that... element that needs to be identified yeah let me make a note yeah, that part whatever you said I agree yeah that's true but uh, full administrator based on that statement what you showed right that was yeah. like uh, that not is, clear yeah. to me that's the reason I raised it yeah, yeah true 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 but um, working with uh, full admin at cluster so that I, I can uh, yeah we will we'll work on that one, Sunil. So I have noted it down. So we will work on it. Okay, thanks. This is the very important, uh, this thing. Yeah, good. Appreciable. So the next aspect that I thought of bringing it to your notice is decommissioning of the host. I think uh, some of you has uh, raised this one in the last session if I'm not wrong I don't know 
Yeah, I wanted to. Uh, I asked that question where you know I had to decommission some hose after adding new hose. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you only raised that one. Yeah. So look at this. You cannot decommission a data node or a host with a data node if the number of data nodes equal the replication factor of any file stored in HDFS. So what what you get from this point? Yeah. So basically, if I have four data nodes and if my application is four, I cannot decommission a data node unless I add another one. Exactly. I add one more node to the cluster and then I decommission one of the data nodes, right? Exactly. So even if you decommission that one, even if you decommission that one, the data node will be decommissioned. But the decommission process will not complete. The decommission process will not be completed. So as a result, what needs to be done is we need to abort the decommission process and recommission that data node. Recommission that data node. So recommission the new data node or the one Is which we have already decommissioned? No, whatever your because that will not get decommissioned at all. So you may have, you may select that one and uh, say decommission. That process will go on, right? Now if I go and say, I have four data nodes, right? So I can do one. No, not a problem. I can do one. No, that part I understood. But uh, to the point what Arun said, like uh, if you, if I have four data nodes and uh, my replication factor is four, mm. we cannot decommission. If at all we try to decommission also, uh, it won't complete the process. So we have to decommission and recommission that data node. So that is no, no, no. fine. We need to we need to abort that decommissioning process. Yeah, abort and re re uh, re uh, recommission should happen. Yes, yes. So if at all I want to add a new data node to Arun said like fifth node, yeah. then can I go and uh, uh, decommission the node which I want yeah. as I have another node? That can be done. So okay. once you have added a new node, that always can be done. So not an issue. So while doing that, do we need to transfer the data from uh, that node which we are removing, or uh, no, no, it, can, no, no, it has to? No, 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 no. That is a that is a point that I think uh, I might have uh, mentioned it down. Yeah, look at this one. When a data node is decommissioned. The name node ensures that every block from data node will still be available across the cluster as dictated by the replication factor. So the decommission process will take care of that uh, by uh, yeah, making when, it available. When you, when you make the node to get decommissioned, what happens is the name node will take the responsibility of uh, uh, replicating the blocks on the other nodes of the cluster so that the replication factor has been consistently maintained. Got it. You got the point? Yes, Srinivas. This process, this procedure involves copying blocks from data node in small batches. If the data node has thousands of blocks, decommissioning can take several hours before decommissioning hose with the, of course, this, this uh, fine tuning needs to be done or tuning of your nodes needs to be done, they say, because if there are any correct blocks and all, we are going to check those things and make sure that is being taken care of first. And then uh, you actually decommission, then there will not be any, uh, any chance of losing uh, the data uh, even in the event of uh, one more node failure during the decommission process because we cannot uh, say exactly these are the things that happens. Imagine a situation where you are decommissioning a node, 
process is going on and one of the node got failed one of the node got failed then what happens maybe whatever the hardware failure or whatever it is then what happens i think the decommission process will hang uh, it won't complete it won't complete it won't complete because already that is where the point is been very clearly mentioned here i don't know uh, what part of uh, the documentation been mentioned that one but it is been clear so when a data node decommission uh, when you are decommissioning a particular data node your name node is going to ensure that every block from the data node is still available across the cluster as dictated by the replication factory that is always been ensured after taking that uh, that is the reason why i say name node will have a enormous load on it why name node will have enormous load say for example you are decommissioning a particular node it has got 10000 blocks assume all those 10000 blocks needs to be made available on a different cluster now are getting my point yes sir so that information should be known to the name node in advance oh these 1000 blocks i can replicate on these nodes of my cluster so that the replication factor is been consistently maintained so when the name node will have that information name node will have that information when it has the complete details about the other uh, data nodes like where all the provision is there oh fine i can put these 1000 blocks in these nodes so that across the cluster the same uh, consistent replication factor is been maintained but all of a sudden when that process is happening one of the data node got failed how come the name node knows with the heartbeat the name node comes to know that the data node got failed then what it needs to do it should not allow because if it allows the decommission process to happen or to continue then the rule of maintaining the consistent replication factor across the cluster is been violated you're getting the point what i'm saying here we are intentionally decommissioning a host but there it got failed for some reason maybe next uh, you know a few seconds in the stipulated time once twice thrice uh, the threshold uh, what you have set up there for uh, you know updating the heartbeats and all and the uh, the metrics that are been supplied even beyond that one if there is no heartbeat then it consider your name node is going to consider that particular node as the last node in the cluster then that uh, the blocks that are supposed to be present on that also should be replicated in the other nodes to maintain that consistent replication factor right so if i allow the decommission process to happen and also try to replicate those things then definitely at uh, your cluster level the consistent factor of uh, replication uh, will not be available observe here only when the decommission process is complete then only you can remove that uh, node from the cluster then only you can remove that node from the cluster now till then till then uh, till the blocks are being replicated in the other nodes till then this this node is going to be part of the cluster only you go and see here i select a particular node i selected data node 1 and i selected the option called what is that host decommission now i say confirm so as part of this uh, decommissioning what is happening it is first st uh, stopping the services that are running on that one are you getting the point what i am saying here and then decommissioning of uh, your yarn and then decommissioning of your hdfs 
then only you are able to remove that node from the cluster now this process may take uh, several hours depending on the number of blocks present on that particular host of course here we don't have too many and it will it will not take uh, uh, you know much time but still it is a time consuming process i i think i have kept uh, uh, one big file yes what is that decommissioning of your uh, uh, yarn service that is a node manager and all on that now decommissioning of hdfs is happening because there is a uh, data node role that is uh, running on this particular uh, node so that also needs to be decommissioned and once it has been successful then we can ensure that the blocks are consistently available in the replication factor set by you then only you can remove that node from the cluster you can notice that here so skipping this command because no roles require decommissioning that is the reason why intentionally i am doing it on my data node one i think it, it doesn't have flume and all i think i have set up on my other thing so not to have any uh, any issue i am only decommissioning my data node one one second friends Yeah, no, I'm going to work on it. yeah this itself it doesn't have much data at all but this itself is taking see how much time and you not know, to decommission your uh, hdfs decommissioning of uh, cr adding data node host to decommission list refreshing the name node waiting for decommissioning to finish marking the roles as decommission stopping data node roles all been done then only it is available for now you can uh, see what happened to my what is that i should see that as a straight is commission
data node one only we did right oh, okay but it should show in the host section it should show that uh, this has been uh, decommissioned yeah yeah right there that didn't got refreshed so you see that one here the data node one got decommissioned now whatever been selected this you can remove from the cluster when you remove from the cluster you can take out that physically from your rack, whatever it is. You got the point? Yeah. So you want, you can recommission the same thing. Recommission this one. Specifying what the, so that it can be made available to the name node. You can see that one here. When you are doing your recommission process, what is happening? Have a look at that one. Right? Now see. Not yet refreshed. So as there is uh, nothing available, so the recommission went uh, pretty quickly, right? Exactly, exactly. Now, you see here, we need to start the roles on that host. I think you see, as part of this one, It is again commissioned back. You notice that? But if you observe closely, still the roles are not being started on that. Still the roles are not being started on that. That is where we select that. And what roles are there? Start roles on the host. Let me say confirm. Then I think you see here execute command start on service HDFS. And it also need to start only after starting your HDFS service. It is going to start your YAN service. Then only it is going to start your Hive service. You can notice that one here. how the roles are getting started. So this gives us uh, some understanding on how. So what is that uh, that is being done here? Tell me. First you are going to decommission. Decommission and then, recommission and start the roles. Yeah, no, no. Even if you want to remove from the cluster, so you need to decommission this. Uh, so you need to decommission that one and after decommission is been done then you can remove from cluster and remove Physically from rack, yeah. Exactly. So in the same process, because this is the reverse process of what we have done earlier. What is that we have done? Assign or uh, keep the machine in the rack. So then obviously, what will be 
IP is assigned, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, what is that? Identify in the cluster and uh, deploy necessary configuration, right? And whatever you want, the roles, uh, services, as part of the services roles, you can deploy onto that particular post. You got that point? Yeah. So in the reverse mode, we are doing now. We are decommissioning. So that time, there is no concept of uh, commissioning and all. By default, you bring the post into the cluster and you deploy all the configuration needed onto that one and you can uh, start uh, services as part of that the roles are automatically being started now if you go back and see here now on this you should see all the roles on the all the roles on the, you noticed here, your HDFS and YARN, they are now, of course, a gateway. Now it is, uh, um, it is not active. That is the reason why you are not seeing that even the balancer role also will not be active. Only when that is in usage, you will be seeing that. Otherwise, it is there, but it is not in usage. Okay, so this is one thing that uh, uh, we need to understand and that is what? So in order to make recommission, we have noticed how we can recommission and after recommissioning is done, you need to start the roles on that particular host so that um, you know, those services will be up and running on the respect to host. Make sense? Yes, yeah. yes. So, with this, if you are able to, I mean, uh, recollect all the things, set up the cluster, both manual, we have seen, uh, and uh, through Cloud Manager. But setup we have done only with the Cloudera Manager, but manual process also we have observed. There are common steps between uh, both these, manual and your uh, Cloudera Manager setup process. Okay. And after that, we have understood how we can add hosts to the cluster. How we can do that? How we can add the host to the cluster? You can see that here, add new host to the cluster. And I give the, I think you understand from where this process is going to start. Right? You can bring a new host to the cluster. And those new hosts need not have the same hardware configuration what? The same hardware configuration what your earlier host has got. But need to have the passwordless entry and need to have the root access. Those parameters will not change. And the similar uh, firewall uh, rules that are being set up and ports being allowed. So those been taken care you can bring or you can add host to the cluster and get your things done. Right? So... Yeah, but uh, if we... Uh, so, so Shreen, just a second. So, you said uh, hardware configuration, but if the added uh, host for some reason has lower memory and slower processing than the other nodes, it will affect the processing on the whole cluster, right? No, 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 no. That is what the beauty part of your YARN. 
you what you said is absolutely right when it is your uh, uh, version 1 of your hadoop cluster that is with your job tracker and all but with the yarn you don't have that uh, performance bottleneck depending on the availability of the resources only the computing is going to be allocated uh, not beyond that that is what the whole purpose of yarn right it is going to uh, negotiate the resources needed to run a particular uh, application those resources i mean to the extent of data locality within the boundaries of data locality it is going to make sure that uh, the resources are been allocated on the same and similarly the data distribution also going to happen on the respective nodes now as you said if there is a low computing power uh, machine added to the existing cluster then the process will not be impacted in any way because the processing of the data that is present on that one can be taken care by the other nodes the blocks that are present on that node the processing can be taken care by the other nodes then we will not have any impact you got the pointer yeah i got it now if it is if it is my job tracker based it is no more job tracker based right map reduce mr version 1 if it is mr version 1 where the processing is been taken care by job tracker that time as you said where data is present there only the processing happens you agree with my point yeah right now imagine that i have a 20 blocks for a particular data set on a particular node where we don't have much computing power as you said the processing will be affected but when it comes to yarn it is not that story right yarn will decide what resources are needed to run this application when we submit the application itself then where is the chance that uh, the processing is going to be impacted but there may be in order to achieve this uh, there may be load on the network io but still that is been managed as it is a part of uh, as, as it is within the cluster so with yarn it will not be impacted it with yarn it will not be impacted clear so then yeah i got it so with your uh, host decommission recommission and then uh, you have one more what is that uh, uh, this thing uh, removing the cluster uh, removing the node from the cluster and uh, physically we do it right this is how we are doing so this makes your life cycle of your cluster life cycle in the sense we are talking in the context of the node how we bring in a node at time something goes wrong how we carefully uh, because we are going to check the health status of your host how you are going to check the health status of your host you can go to the respective and check the health status of that one by looking at the aspects like you can see here average disk iops average disk throughput disk latency uh, your uh, yes uh, the memory usage the load average so take all these things into consideration or something going wrong you will be alerted and thereby thereby you make sure thereby you make sure that is been decommissioned that is been removed from the cluster 
and uh, you make the necessary arrangement before and bring in the new host into the cluster. Then it will not be impacted in any way. Right? So you can scale up your cluster by bringing in new hosts uh, periodically. There will not be any issue at all. So I think with this, uh, we were able to uh, clearly do end-to-end -end activities in terms of the host. Now the next activities will be how you can fine-tune your services that are there on your respective that are there on your respective hosts. I mean, fine tuning your services means we go service by service now. How you fine tune your HDFS, how you fine tune your uh, Hive and all in the context of administration only, not in the context of development. That is different again. See, development level, I mean, uh, uh, allocating the resources and all, making the services to run as expected is all the responsibility of the administrator. But when you are submitting the job to the cluster, how many mappers need to run, sorry, how many uh, reducers need to run in the background to get your uh, job executed, that is all been taken care by the developer. So here you have performance tuning, we have two sections again. That needs to be done by the administrator and needs to be done by the developer, right? So we look at the performance tuning in the, uh, in the coming session frames. And then we talk about the resource management. Then we talk about the backup and the disaster recovery. So that gives a decent uh, uh, overview of the entire cluster, you know, in a phased manner. Make sense? Yes, it is. So fine then, friends. Uh, uh, I'll catch up again in the next discussion. So, uh, sorry, one question, I mean.